All right, friends, welcome back to the podcast. This is podcast episode number 168, where I introduce you to my friend, Aaron Sanderson. Aaron Sanderson, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much. I've been looking forward to hanging out with you on your podcast for so long. I'm excited. Well, literally, though, we've just sat here and talked for 15 minutes before I even hit record. We should have just been recording the whole time because it was some interesting conversation. But it really was. I am so glad to have you here and to introduce you to my audience. So I'm going to tell them how I know Aaron. So I met Aaron when I was at a business conference in what city were we in? Laguna. We? Laguna. Yes. And so I see you walk into the room in a tutu and I'm like, who is she? Because we're clearly related somehow. And I've got to know who that is. Do you remember that outfit? I do. It's I'm one like, of my favorites. Well, uh, but I, I love tutus. Do you know that? I have like um, a lot of branding pictures taken in tutus. My conference, which is supposed to be next week, I had the coolest tutu that was short in the front and long in the back oh, for day one. I'm seriously- A high, low tutu? Come a high, on. low tutu. Fuchsia. I, it, with your name written all over it. And so I remember just seeing you float across the room and I'm like, I'm related to her somehow. She's my sister from another mister. So- I'm so happy to introduce you to my people today. So I'm going to read um, your bio to them real quick, just so that they get to know you a little bit. So Erin started her journey in small town, South Dakota, which I think is why I also love you. Small town, oh, Iowa girl here. Midwestern people unite. Right. I mean, and you can always yeah. kind of pick them out of a crowd. Yeah. So you knew music was your passion a long time ago and moved to Nashville as soon as she turned 18 to make her dreams a reality. And that she did. Super cool story. I moved to Kansas City when I was 19 also from my small town. Isn't that funny? Yeah. Yes. Oh, we are sisters. relocated, girl. We are yeah. sisters. So Aaron toured the country sharing the stage with acts like Hailstorm and Candlebox, who I don't know, but this is so cool. You wrote songs for MTV and Keeping Up with the Kardashians? Yeah, as a songwriter, we, you know, as a songwriter, you write songs and you write songs right. and you write songs and you write songs. And eventually, you know, one of them gets picked up and used by Keeping Up with the Kardashians and one gets picked up and used by MTV and one gets picked up, you know. Okay, that is of, really cool. <laughs> and maybe I'm really, really, really impressed because I cannot sing nor play any sort of music like at all. Like I have zero capacity in either of those areas. So I'm so impressed by that. But thank you. Um, nowadays, you are chasing your new dreams as the CEO of a non-toxic skincare line called Skin, which I love. Yeah. You're getting ready to launch a clothing line. And most of all, you're using your life story to inspire women to chase their dreams with their own, uh, with a virtual girl gang. I love that you call it that, called She's a Rock Chick. So, yes. you're do honey, you're doing some things. I'm doing all the things, man. <clears throat> I'm doing all the things. Okay. Yeah. So, I want to talk about when I first um, met you, though, Erin. And what was really cool is I remember DMing you a long time ago and thinking, I think even before I saw you in the tutu. And I remember thinking to myself, okay, she's, she's not going to DM me back because, you know, you're a big deal and you've got a lot going on. And you used to be um, helping people with thyroid issues. And that's when yeah. I DM'd you. Not only did you DM me back, you sent me, and you probably don't even remember this, multiple voice messages back. And I was like, oh my gosh, she serves her people like so stinking well. I just, that made, that made an impression on me. I just want you to know that. And so, um, so tell people what you used to do, because that's, uh, that's when I first met you. Yeah. So as a touring musician, you know, and the life that comes with that, it's very challenging and very hard. And I was in a lot of bad uh, situations and kind of toxic places, you know, yeah. mm -hmm. um, eventually that led to a diagnosis of hypothyroidism okay. and you know, th that the life on the road piled with just a lot of fitness, just too much fitness, <laughs> like taking fitness, taking fitness to the unhealthy. Too, place. Okay. Gotcha. Yes, gotcha. Yes, I, I can't it. relate to that actually. <laughs> <laughs> Because what I'm hearing you saying is you worked out too much and I cannot relate to that, but I like <laughs> Yes, yes, I did. I worked myself into hypothyroidism. Okay, got it. Yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, my personality is very, um, I won't, I don't like the word aggressive, very passionate, very passionate mm -hmm. personality. And I just said, no, I'm not doing this. I, I'm not going to have this, this, th I haven't had this my whole life. It doesn't make sense. This happened for a reason. You know, when things are out of line in your life, you can yes. kind of tell. And that's yeah. where I was. I was like, yeah, I knew things weren't right for a while. So I went on this mission to really reverse my diagnosis. And I did like, yes. you were a researcher and I became one. I, yes. I was never one before that, but I dove into, um, research and ended up 
being blessed enough to work with and become friends with New York Times bestselling authors on the subject of thyroid health. Yeah. Um, and I was able to study under them and eventually did, you know, reverse my diagnosis. In the process, I created a course yeah. called Thyroid Jumpstart where I just taught people everything that I did. Yeah. I mean, I just mapped it out. Everything from day one to day reverse diagnosis, this is exactly what I did and gave them access to that. I love, I love that so much. And so that's um, what you were doing when I met you. Um, and so you have made a pivot and yes. I would love for you to talk to our listeners about your pivot. And what I really want to know is like, how did you know when it was time to pivot? Like, were you just, since your thyroid was under control, was it like a, you know, well, I'm not really passionate about that topic anymore. Or was it something that maybe you've been thinking about mm -hmm. for a long time anyway, and the timing just seemed right or walk us through what's happened with the last couple of years. Yeah. So it's kind of like a slow fade for me. That's the way that it happened. It's, it's, and then one day I realized that I wasn't struggling with my health anymore and my dreams were coming back to life. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to breathe life back into them. I wanted to do the things that I, that I was passionate about once again. The thing with having a thyroid issue is it steals your passions. You just don't have the energy. You don't have the brain capacity. You just, mm -hmm. you can't really do anything full out. Right. And so I felt like my dreams got stolen for, for a few years. Okay. Um, but God is good Amen. and he always yeah. gives you back way more than you ever thought you were going to have. Amen. And th yes. throughout all that, he taught me that I'm capable of so much more than just singing and playing guitar and writing songs. And I never would have known that. I never would have known yeah. that I was smart enough to do other things and capable had he not walked me through that. But my dreams, I saw them sitting there and I'm like, you know, I can do this again. Mm -hmm. And I want to, and I wanted to do that, not just for me, but I wanted people who followed me for thyroid reasons to be able to see that their dream, their dreams can come back to life too. That, that there's another side of this, that they don't have to be in it all the time. That if they, if they really dig in and, and really focus on healing their body, because mm -hmm. our bodies are designed to heal. If, if you focus on that, that your dreams are waiting on the other side of that. And I wanted them to watch it. Yeah. I wanted them to watch me, yes. watch me do it and believe that for themselves too. So it was for me and feeling my dreams coming back to life again. And it was also for the people who followed me through my journey yeah. to see me through the other side. And so was the dream like making a skincare line or was the dream more like having your girl gang or tell me what the dream actually was, or was it like all of the above? You know, when I was a little girl, we would go on a lot of road trips and we would drive through big cities and I would see these big buildings and I would always think, I'm going to own that building one day. I, I would ask for briefcases for Christmas <laughs> when I was like eight. That is hilarious. <laughs> yeah. I would ask for like the little receipt notepads from Walmart when I was like eight and 10 and 12 and to put them in my briefcase to like plan. So I think that I always had this, this uh, in me. But yeah, since I was a little girl, I've thought about having a cosmetics line, skincare line. Yeah. When I was 10 years old, my family would call me my mom's house. They would call my mom's house and I, yeah. they would ask to talk to me. And then I'd say hello. And they'd say, is this 1-800 dial style? Because they knew oh. how into clothes I was. Um, it's hilarious. That paired with getting to be a musician on my own terms. For me, life on the road didn't make sense with my relationships and my well-being. But now I can see how skincare and cosmetics and uh, clothing and live events and music all go hand in hand in this like beautiful thing that feels just like the most authentic me. Yes. You know? I love that. I love it so much. And so you shifted, how long ago has it been since you kind of shifted out of the thyroid into your skincare line? Well, skin will be one year old on May 9th. Okay. That is yeah. awesome. Congratulations. So think, thank you. So I think it's been about two years okay. uh, since I have, have pivoted. Okay. And so we have a ton of listeners, Erin, who especially right now, we're recording this in the middle of you know, the coronavirus, mm -hmm. who are thinking of making a pivot, have been wanting to make a pivot, who aren't quite sure how to make a pivot. And so tell us, like, did you kind of like... Um, tell your audience, your online audience that a pivot was coming? Like, where, did you kind of start talking about your dreams of a skincare line or just all of a sudden one day did you go, 
this is what this is what my daughter Ava used to say when she was little. Titty titty da <laughs> instead of tada. Titty titty da. <laughs> One day we're just like titty titty da. I have a skincare line. <laughs> I am keeping that forever. I titty am titty da. That for, titty titty da. Yes. I'm keeping <laughs> she that. also used to call uh, everybody that follows me know this the hobby lobby the hobbly lobbly. She just had a funny way of saying things. So I, I can't even call it Hobby Lobby. It will always be the Hobbly Lobbly and Titty Titty Da. So that's hilarious. My grandma has a weird way of saying things. She calls Parmesan cheese Parmesan. <laughs> and so I, that's, that's how I have to say Parmesan cheese. I wonder, that's, a, that's fine. My mom has um, something with Ottoman. She calls it an Ottoman. <laughs> and and tortilla is a tortilla and i'm like oh yeah so at some point you just like let them say it and you just roll yeah it. <laughs> it's just the little joys in life it is it really is um so what was the question again the question was did you could did you kind of tell your audience oh, that right. you were thinking about things and kind of working on some stuff in the background because i'm guessing it probably took what a year to get your skincare mm-hmm. line like and we can talk about that in a second but i just want to know like did you did you bring your audience in on the journey with you or did, was it kind of a surprise for them? A little of both. So with my social media following and just my general following, Mm -hmm. it was kind of a slow drip of, um, talking more about that, sharing things that I did with my skin and whatever, and talking about the creation of something and kind of alluding to, I do a lot of alluding. You were seed planting, baby. You were seed planting. I'm all about that seed planting life. I, I seed plant all day long. It really helps me to get a pulse on the people too. It does. And then and, you don't feel like you're doing gross sales stuff. You're just letting them know, oh yeah, I'm going to have some. Oh yeah, I'm going to have something. I love it. Exactly. Love it. Exactly. Then in my membership community, I took it straight to them. And I was like, hey girls, here's what I'm thinking. Awesome. I'm, I really want to create a skincare line. Would you be into that? Pulse of the people. My membership community is my pulse on the people. They are my muse, so to speak. Like yeah. they are just incredible. And they were like, yes, we'd be into it. So I, I had them co-create it with me. I was like, here's what I'm, here's what I have for the label. I'm really leaning towards this one. What do you think? And they're like, Ooh, I like this one. What if you did this? And I'm like, okay, let's do that. So I really had them co-create it with me. And let me just tell you when, when that bad boy launched, they showed up because yes. they had skin in the game. They knew I created this for them. Right. And I listened to them. Mm-hmm. And so, so they, um, they really helped to build momentum Yeah, because I was so honest. And if I remember correctly, you like sold out really quickly. Yeah. I was yeah, on like, a plane. Right. <laughs> heading, he- I was on a plane heading to South Dakota and okay. I landed and I was like, okay, turn my cell phone on. They don't have Wi-Fi on the little plane that, yeah. that lands in South Dakota. So I turned my cell phone on. And I'm like, okay, getting ready to go on Instagram, get in sales mode. Yeah. Like, let's do this. Yes. And I, bah, 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 it sold out. My, my messages were just going off. It was sold out. My sister was supposed to come pick me up and she goes, I'm late because we're trying to figure out how to shut down the website because oh, it sold out. So I had to like sit there at the airport like by myself because oh my, my team God. is trying to figure out how to shut down the website. And I've never experienced that before in my life. Yeah. You know, I've always hated launching. Yes. I just, I hate it so bad. And then I was like, what just yes happen. You're, uh, you know what? I, I, and that was a life-changing day. And I remember That's that life-changing day for me. It was um, two and a half years ago. I was launching um, my creator's roadmap course, which teaches people how to make money in seven different ways online. And Aaron, I didn't know enough about launching. I hadn't done enough launches to know that you don't plan a vacation on your close cart day. So it was my 20th wedding anniversary to Jason. And so we had planned a trip to the Cayman Islands and and we were going to come home or we were leaving like the day after the launch. But then our travel agent is like, um, it's better if you come, if you leave the day before. And I looked at my calendar and I'm like, Hey, we're closing the card on creators roadmap. Like no big deal. My team, you know, I have an assistant at the time and one other person, I think they'll be fine. And so I remember like the same thing. We were on a plane with no Wi-Fi, and it's closed cart day and the emails were going out. And I think I'd done a couple of posts and we land like somewhere for our layover. And I'm like, looking at my phone thinking, what the heck is happening? Because I didn't realize like sometimes 40% of your sales will come in on the last day. And then we had to take, you know, a smaller plane to the Cayman Islands. And I remember landing going, I don't even know what's happening here. Like sale after sale after sale. It was our first six figure launch. And I just remember like then it's midnight and we're in the Cayman Islands and Jason and I are like glued to my phone going, our life is changing like right before our eyes. Like we just, 
did something that was big. And so I know exactly that feeling. And I bet you didn't mind sitting in that airport. Just kind of No, I was just like, because <laughs> you're like, I can't believe it. This is amazing. <laughs> yes. It was, it was literally a life changing moment. Like I, I remember when they finally came and picked me up, we, I went to my sister's house and my mom came over and she was sitting on the couch and I literally laid on my mom's lap. And I was just like, what in the world? I, I had expected this to be like other launches where you just work your tail off yeah. and you, you right. probably miss it by, you know, you, yeah. you, and as a, as an entrepreneur, even missing it is, is a win, but we don't recognize that as a win unless right. we're right, you know, right, right. really your, winning. What's your Enneagram number? Do you know? I'm not, I'm not very good at this. I think I'm a seven. Okay. Is that, no, what's the achiever? That's what I am. Eh, you're a three. That's what I oh, would, That's a three. That's me. Yeah. yeah I would have guessed. Yeah. So, and I love that you just said, did you really just lay your head on your mother's lap? Well, now I got to call my mom and <laughs> ask her when she can come over after we're done being quarantined. That is so precious as, and you know what? Cause it just made my heart leap. I've got three teenage kids. And if one of them would lay their head on my lap right now, I think I would just lose it. That's so precious of you. Good they job. Good they job, Erin. They're 38. They will. They will. <laughs> Launching a skincare line. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So tell me how you handled the pivot, like, you know, on social media. I know how you handled it with your group, but when you, when you launched skin, did you go ahead and just, you put it on your social media? Did you just start talking about it also on your email list? How did you handle the whole pivot? Yeah, we, I started talking about it as much as possible and, and letting people have little glimpses. So for example, when we would get the packaging, uh, when I had my first sample yes. box to approve, you know, I would do a little boomerang of that yes. or whenever I figured out my catchphrase, which is great skin is so rock and roll. I, I did a little video of that, you know, and I would, I would see it and they were very excited and I would show them when I was testing, they didn't know what it was, but I was testing something and I'd show them like a great skin day and they'd be like, Oh my gosh, I can't wait for this to, 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 you know, be here. So they were on the edge of their seats. Yeah. Um, and, and to be quite honest, I had never done that before. So I didn't really know if I had a good strategy or not. Yeah. Well, it's, you know? it's interesting. One of the questions people ask me a lot is if I pivot my business, like what do I do with my social media? Do I just like ditch it and start all over? And I'm always like, no, 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 no. Because a fraction of the people that you accumulated for this thing that you used to do, they will also be interested in this new thing. You might lose some, but who cares? Or they'll, you know, right. that's, that's okay. Because I pivoted from being in the DIY and painting world over to business coaching. You pivoted from thyroid over to skincare. Mm -hmm. And so um, I'm guessing for the most part though, your audience has just grown and grown and grown. And would you suggest to other people like, just make the pivot. Like, don't overthink it. Just do it. Yeah. I think that we think about it way more than anyone else does. And we think it's such a big deal. But to be quite honest, like I said, the slow fade, you know, into if you're honest and you're real, like you are, Jennifer. Okay. You're honest and you're real. People were going to want business coaching from you anyways. Yeah. You know what I mean? You were a smart businesswoman from the get. Okay. That's why you were so good at what you're doing, even in DIY. Yeah. If you're honest, the part of you that you, what you'll pivot to, there's some, there's some sort of seed already in there. Right. And for me, you know, I, I was always a, just a little bit vain and, you know, always wanted great skin. Your skin is marvelous, by the way. Thank if, you. If you're going to need to go to Erin's Instagram, like ASAP. She's under Fit Rocker Chick. And there's two things you're going to notice. A, her gorgeous skin and B, her yellow nails. And, um, what, why, why are the nails yellow? I love it. You never wear any color other than uh -oh. yellow on your nails. That's your trademark no, and, color. And let me just tell you, since, since the Rona is take is large and in charge, I had to do my own gel manicure last night. Sister, okay. I am not skilled. Yeah. So this is the best part of the podcast right here. And this is where I'm going to need you to send Aaron and I all the DMS. How did you get off your nails? Because right now, like my roots are so dark. My eyebrows are bushy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. My, yes. I really need a little Botox action. And I have about three days left on these nails before I, I'm just going to start picking them off. Like, what do I use? A crowbar? Okay. I don't know. <laughs> I take a, a, get a, get a thick file and okay. Amazon is delivering so we can yes. get that. So, or you can go to the grocery store if right. you must. But so I got a thick file and you file them down okay. just, just so you can get the top coat off. And then you get a cotton ball with fingernail polish remover. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Put it on there and wrap it with tinfoil. Okay. Each that's little what I'm finger. 
Okay. Because yeah, I'm going to have to do my own as well. And so um, it's interesting when it's interesting, the things it's like, what do we all really look like? We're going to know in about a month here. <laughs> like I haven't seen my real hair color in 20 years. So who knows? I won't, I won't know. I am fully stocked on root, co- on Are root you? color. Yes. <laughs> awesome. I'm like, not happening. That's awesome. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm really a blonde, so I can't let that happen. Are you serious? Mm-hmm. Wow. I don't know what color I really am. I think I'm medium brown. So um, interesting. So tell me about, um, since you're kind of the queen of pivoting and changing here, what pivots and things are you having to make right now with um, coronavirus, COVID-19, Rona, whatever you want to call it? Let's call it the Rona. The Rona. I always want to sing, my my, my, my Sharona. (laughs) My Corona. Oh my my gosh. I need to write a parody song. You do, because that, that, I I literally looked that song up on YouTube the other day. I'm like, why is nobody else thinking of this? My, 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 my Corona. (laughs) Yes, that's funny. Um, Okay, so speaking to pivoting, one thing I will say is that um, if you're pivoting from like the digital world into a product-based business, like I did, it's important to understand business models um, mm-hmm. and how things work. Uh, sim- similarly to how, if you were to launch a course, how that business model would be different than launching a membership community. Right. You know, mm-hmm. just the way that money comes in is different. Yes. So things to consider when you're pivoting, so that you don't freak out when money rolls in differently. Yeah. You know, and that's just something that's that's good to plan for. Um, right now, um, because of the Rona, we have decided to, we were going to have a live event on May 2nd, 3rd. We're postponing that to September. Yeah. Um, and we're, we're kind of just moving and stretching things out, um, trying to be very empathetic to people mm-hmm. and to understand their thought process and understanding the thought process of where your consumer is, is important. Right. And meeting them where they are is important so that they if they feel heard, they're going to buy from you. If yeah. they feel understood, they're going to buy from you. And so me, I think- Let me ask you this, Erin. Are people still buying? Because I have been having this conversation with the women I coach every day. We have some people in my membership group right now who are having record months in sales. Yeah. People are stress shopping, aren't they? Oh, yes. People are buying. Like skin is flying right. out the door. I know. And if, I'm so- if, I had, if I had my clothing line done, it, people would be like, oh, yes. I'm Absolutely. Because this, yes. this is me. This is me on social media right now. I don't need those <laughs> earrings, but oh my gosh, it'll make me feel so much better. And so I don't need that shirt, but boy, it sure is cute. And eventually I'll be able to leave my house again and I'm going to buy it. Now. Yes. People are yeah. still shopping. Of course, of course, they're cleaning out their closet. They're trying to figure out what they're going to fill it back up with. <laughs> they're looking, they're looking for little hits of excitement and mm-hmm. happiness, and buying things, especially for women, makes yes. us feel good. It does. And so people, people are definitely buying. In addition to that, um, we're trying to make things available that are relevant. Mm-hmm. Um, so anytime you can make things relevant in a pivot is yes. really key and very, very important. And what I mean by that is. Um, we are, by the time this launches, we will have launched, we will have launched a set of earrings that are beautiful sterling silver cross earrings. Mm-hmm. And the, the marketing, the thought behind that is not only have I been wearing these earrings for the past two years of yes. my life, I've so, seen everyone, you in the pictures. Yep. everyone has asked me about them, but also keeping the faith is so important right now. Yeah. It's so important. The fight is always, in my opinion, in life to keep the faith, keep the faith that you're on the right path. Keep the faith that things are going to work out. Keep the faith, you know, that, that you are exactly where you're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And so bringing them a product that's relevant, right. Instead of trying to, you know, move the same old thing and being able to do that is really important. And if you're in the digital space, bringing them content that and a course that's relevant right. is a great opportunity right now. Yeah, it really is. We are opening up my inner circle coaching mm-hmm. because I coach women on how to start a business and how to grow a business. Um, and so, I mean, there's so many people right now who are thinking, okay, I guess this is it. I'm just gonna throw up my hands and walk away and don't do that. It is such a great time to double down on what's been working Mm. for you. If you have had an idea of a business or you've been having a hobby, now is the time to like really push on the gas because people are buying and they're on social media more than ever, more than ever. And let me just also mention Facebook ads, really, really low right now really, really low. Really, really low. Yeah. And, and so, so now is the time. Now's not the time to back down. Now's right. the time to lean into it. And plus as an entrepreneur, like get those creative juices flowing at the end of your resources is your creativity, yes. you know? And so being a creative entre- entrepreneur means thinking of things outside of the box. Yeah. You might not be able to do what you've always done. And that's not a bad thing. 
Right. Like start something new. Yes. Think of something new. Think of a new spin on it and a new way yep. that you can help your consumer and your customers. Think of the thing that you've always wanted to do that you haven't done yet. Yeah. And for me, I can speak to pivoting being the greatest thing I've ever done every time I've done it. Yes. And I'm not scared to pivot. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not scared to do that because if you are honest and real and relevant with your audience, they have proved to me over and over and over that they will come with me. That they will come with you. That's awesome. Yeah. Do you think you're just wired not to be scared of the pivot? Like, is the pivot not the boss of you? Or <laughs> yeah, <laughs> give a little shout out to my book right now. Yeah. Or do you think you're just wired for that, Erin? Or do you think that, you know what, I've pivoted enough times that now I just know um, I, that I, I do. I love change. Scared. Okay. Oh, I, I love, love that. Yeah. I love change. I love change. Um, I love when, to be totally, sorry that that was loud. Oh, no. To be totally honest, um, when I decided to come off the road and start my very first business in that, and I spoke to this earlier, I learned that I was smarter than I thought mm -hmm. and that I was capable of more than I thought. And mm -hmm. I, I, I became, it was like grieving a death kind of, mm -hmm. um, not being a touring musician anymore. But I learned through that, that God was showing me that I was capable of doing a lot yeah. more and that, that, uh, kind of burned down any fear that I had of change. Mm -hmm. And I thought, man, if he can bring me out of that, if he can bring me out of that, yes, <laughs> he amen. will bring me out of anything else. And so yeah. I'm just not scared to try. I love that. I love that so much because I think so often we stay in seasons or doing things or uh, we cling on to things that were good in an old season for us. Mm -hmm. And God's yeah. trying so hard to shift us, but we're still like, we've got our pinky toe over there. We're still like holding on with one arm and you can't fully like receive what God's giving you in a new season when your hands are still, you know, halfway in the old one. And so yeah. I am so, so proud of you. So, um, so can I do a couple of rapid fire questions as we get ready to end up here just for fun? fun. Rapid yes. fire. These are just, these are just fun. So tell me your favorite book. The Noticer. The Noticer. What is that about? It is about noticing. <laughs> it, yeah. It's about a man who um, shows up in people's life at the exact time that they need him. And they, really? they show, he shows them a different perspective. Oh, I love that. Okay. I love that. Favorite TV show, series, Netflix thing, any of that. Blacklist. Blacklist. Got it. Favorite room in your house? Living room. How come? It's where I get to snuggle with my puppies and my husband yeah. and I love the colors. It's like I have a royal blue couch and an emerald green couch and just like the light comes in and it hits the dynamic. And, you know, in the world of white, everyone's house is white and clean. I have bright colors like you. I, I was just saying, I have blue velvet sofas. I didn't know yeah. you had blue velvet I do. Sofas. I have awesome. blue velvet too. Yeah. That is and awesome. I just, I love looking at it and it just makes me feel. Makes you happy. Yeah. yeah. Tell me your favorite place to vacation. Hawaii. Oh, awesome. Hawaii was supposed to be on our list this summer and New York City. And now I'm like, <laughs> we pushed the pause button on everything. <laughs> but okay, last question. Tell me how you define freedom or what does freedom look like for you? I love this mm -hmm. question. Let me think about it so I really can answer you well. I'll okay. Okay. Freedom for me is knowing that I'm in my purpose, mm -hmm. whether I like the season or not. Freedom for me is knowing that I'm in my purpose because that's where I know that I'm taken care of mm -hmm. and that's where I can let go and not try to white knuckle. Uh, I feel like I white knuckle when I'm not quite sure yeah. if I'm in my purpose. And when I am, whether or not it's a happy season, a hard season, um, a trying season, a sad season, I can let go and know that this is where I'm, I'm just taken care of and know that that's where I'm supposed to be. I totally love that answer. Okay. So people are going to be DMing me. Where can I find Erin online? Where can I find your skincare products? So where do you want people to, you like playing on Instagram the most. Am I right? Yes. I love Instagram. So send me a DM on Instagram. I'm at fit rocker chick. Um, and if you want to check out the skincare line, um, you can go to fit rocker chick skin.com. But if you have questions about skin, then you can just DM me and your products, Erin, tell them all natural. Yeah. Non-toxic oil-based skincare. Mm -hmm. I, you were the first person I've ever heard say, and I'm going to just massacre your quote, but you said something like, girls, your skin is kind of like leather. How do you keep it soft? Oil. You need oil. Am I right? Yeah. Is that what you, and yeah. I was like, wait a second. I do need oil. 
<laughs> yeah. I think I said like, you're like, what are you going to do with a scuffed up leather boot? You're going right. to oil it, right? right. Skin's the same Z's. <laughs> oil it up. And I will never forget when I heard you say that on an Instagram story. I'm like, you know what? Oil. She's right. I need oil. Help me over here. All right, Erin. I, I just love hanging out with you. I love talking to you. I love getting a chance to see you in real life on occasion. And so I just um, pray a blessing over you and your business, girl. I'm so happy for you. Every time I watch you Thank pivot, you. I'm like, yay, watch her go. So I can't wait to see you make your own line of tutus one day. I'll be first. Oh my gosh, sister. When this clothing line is done, I'm sending you some. And I would love to support that for you. All right. We're going to rock it. All right, go friends and check out Erin at Fit Rocker Chick on social media. Like she said, and you can connect with her on the Instagram. Go to fitrockerchickskin.com if you want to check out her skincare line. And please, I hope that what you took away from this conversation was um, pivots are great. Pivots can be so powerful. If you feel like God is trying to shift you or if based on our current, you know, pandemic in the world that you're having to shift, I just encourage you to really like reframe how you look at that in your mind because on the other side of a pivot is usually a brilliant, beautiful thing. So until next week, be blessed. Bye-bye. 